Well, Cheryl, can you explain to me about uh, about your struggle with mm -hmm. uh, with this situation? Sure. Um, in 1990, I flew to Romania with my mom to adopt Lindy, because it, when you adopt a baby from Romania, you might be gone an indefinite amount of time at that time anyway, which could have been up to two or three months. So Steve couldn't get off work to go with us. So we flew over to Romania and we found Lindy um, in an orphanage over there. And um, before we could leave Romania, we had to have her tested for HIV as a requirement by the U.S. government uh, because they weren't letting HIV people of any, any age in to the U.S. So we, f we found a doctor there and he tested her and she was negative. So we were, this was just before Christmas in 1990. We were just joyful and thinking, um, you know, the holidays were going to be super special this year. And so we flew home. And um, just a few days after we were home, I took Lindy to her first doctor visit here. And the doctor recommended that she have a full battery of tests that they do for internationally adopted children. And HIV was one of the tests that they did. And so, um, our doctor called one day and he said, just shortly after we had those tests, and he said that you really should come into my office because we need to talk about the test. He said, he didn't say which one, so we, we did go into his office and he said that Lindy tested positive for HIV. How rock solid are the tests being that in Romania the test was negative and when you get to the United States the test was positive? Are those yeah. tests, you know, are those tests guaranteed to be 100 percent no. every time. <laughs> well, we thought they were. I mean, and at the time they told us, oh, well, she was just in a latency period. That's why she didn't have the test or test positive in Romania. But she did over here because she had antibodies that just bloomed suddenly. Um, I'm not sure what the explanation is because I'm not a scientist. But um, we should have thought about it differently. But we just believed everything they told us. And so we assumed she was positive. And um, our, our, just our family, our, you know, a, a pediatrician recommended that we take Lindy to a specialist here in the Twin Cities. So we took her there to the pediatric uh, infectious disease specialist at the Children's Hospital. And um, she did all the, the tests again, the Western blots. And um, she said, yes, Lindy's positive, and I'll give you a prescription. And right she wrote it up spot. right then and there. And so we went to the pharmacy in the hospital, in the children's uh, hospital and clinic there. And right on the pharmacy floor, we opened up that bottle and gave her her first dose because we thought we'd you know, start saving her life right then and there. And how old was she at that time? She was only three months old. Three months old. Mm -hmm. Well, at first, you know, she seemed to do OK with it. But when her, when her growth didn't keep up with the growth chart, you know, in a natural progression, um, they would up her dose, and for uh, her T cell counts were dropping too. And this was another thing the doctors were concerned with was getting those T cell counts to go up. And her T cell counts would go up, but her weight just kind of kept going straight instead of going up. And so um, we we prog we went on like this for almost two years. And every six weeks we'd go to the doctor, and they would say the same thing, you know. Just keep up that medicine. Just give her all the medicine that prescribed. And um, after a while of that, um, toward the end of the two-year time that she was on medication, my dad found an article in a magazine that he reads. It's a National Review. And he read an article in there that was written by Tom Bethel about Peter Duisberg, the same author. But Duisberg had not written the book at that time, but he had made a splash in the science industry or science uh, magazines. And um, we, my dad read one of these articles, and Duisberg flat out said, HIV doesn't cause AIDS. And even more so, the drugs will kill you if you continue to take them. And your daughter would die of it, just like Kimberly Bergalis did. So we, um, we wrote to Peter Duisberg in October of 1992. And 10 days later, we received a thick packet of information in the mail and a handwritten letter that, that convinced us to take Lindy off the AZT right then and there. Wow. Now, based off of uh, 
the Rethinking AIDS organization. Um, is there a, are, are there any statistics out there of people who are, believe in the movement and believe in Rethinking AIDS who are not taking the drugs? Are there statistics, statistics on their um, health and their life expectancy, and is there, a, is there any correlation between? No, there's no statistics because they don't want to, to present those numbers to people. They don't research those numbers. They only want numbers that back what their agenda to push more drugs onto people sooner upon testing positive on, an H, on a failed HIV positive, on a failed HIV test. So really the only way that Rethinking AIDS could take the onus of keeping those statistics or, or if people who are not taking drugs contact Rethinking AIDS and, and provided that information. Yes. Is that something right. that Rethinking AIDS is trying to uh, gather at this point? Yes, there are, there's, um, a, there's a website already that was already started called uh, livingwithouthivdrugs.com and uh, then we just started a new website locally. It's a global organization, but it's, uh, I started it locally here in Minneapolis called wearelivingproof.org. Um, I met the Nagels because of their involvement with House of Numbers, which is a new documentary that's due to be released in January uh, that portrays their story. And uh, it's a very controversial um, new documentary that's winning awards in major mm -hmm. film festivals all over the world. Uh, best of festival, best documentary. Um, it's very, um, very highly um, contested by the orthodox establishment that doesn't want the public to see it. And uh, so we all went two weekends ago and we went to the Rethinking AIDS conference in San Francisco. It was actually in Oakland just outside of San Francisco uh, from November 6th to the 8th. And there was 170 dissidents in attendance. And um, there is a signed list of over, it's a growing list of over 2,600 pro professionals worldwide, doctors, scientists, and other professionals that are willing to take a stand against the HIV equals AIDS <coughs> hypothesis. And uh, the, the mainstream media would have you believe there's only a handful of people, but there's a, a signed list of 2,600 and growing. And um, each one of those people on that list have been contacted by the Orthodox directly and had their, their, um, their practices threatened, had their reputations threatened that if they didn't have their name removed from the list. Wow. Well, now that we're getting the, the message <coughs> of rethinking AIDS out into the public, how can people get involved? Well, the best way is to go to <clears throat> one of the websites, um, wearelivingproof.org, and there is a wealth of information there to, to view. And um, there, are, there are chapters of Rethinking AIDS dissidents all across the nation and in the world. So the best thing to do is to plug in with people and get to know them personally, and then just continue, continue telling people that you just meet. You know, those people aren't nuts, those rethinkers. They're, they're actually living people. There are actually living people who are, who are still here and not taking their meds, um, living perfectly normal lives. Well, that's great. I'm glad you guys are getting this message out. Um, well, how, how can people help out? Um, for wearelivingproof.org, we are in need of um, nonprofit I'm going to be applying for nonprofit status and uh, attempting to incorporate uh, to provide protection for the organization uh, and the people that are um, on the uh, on the website. Um, I have not been able to get that accomplished yet, so uh, there's an alternative where I can go under another nonprofit's umbrella. Uh, but I haven't found an organization that uh, I haven't had enough time to petition enough organizations to get that done yet. Uh, but people can go on wearelivingproof.org and click on the donate uh, tab and uh, do a secure PayPal donation there.